Yeah, you uh, tweeted, the most significant <laughs> struggle for existence in the evolutionary process is not among the objects that do exist, but between the ones that do and those that never have the chance to. Yeah. This is where selection does most of its ca causal work. The, <laughs> the objects that never get a chance to exist. Yeah. The struggle between the ones that never get a chance to exist and the ones that, okay. what What's that line exactly? I don't know. We can make songs out of all of these. What no. are the objects that never get a chance to exist? What does that mean? So there was there was this uh, website. I forgot what it was, but it's like it's like a a neural network that just generates a human face, and it's yep. like this person does not exist. I think that's what it's called, right? So you can just click on that all day, and you can look at people all day that don't exist. Yeah, all of those people exist in that space of things that don't exist. Yeah, but there's a uh, the real struggle. Yeah, so the struggle uh, of the quote, the struggle of it for existence is, you know, that goes all the way back to Darwin's writing about natural selection, right? So like the whole idea of survival of the fittest is everything struggling to exist, this predator-prey dynamic. Um, and, and the fittest survive. And so the struggle for existence is really what selection is all about. But you're, and that's true. Uh, we do see things that do exist competing to continue to exist. Um, but each time that, like, if you think about this space of possibilities and, you know, each time the universe, you know, generates a new structure or like a, an, an object that exists generates a new structure along this causal chain, it's generating something that exists that never existed before. And each time that we make that kind of decision, we're excluding a huge space of possibilities. And so actually like as this process of increasing assembly index, it's not just that like the space that these objects exist in is exponentially growing, but there are, there are objects in that space that are exponentially receding away from us. So they're becoming exponentially less and less likely to ever exist. And so existence excludes a huge number of things. Just because of the accident of history, how it ended up. Yeah, it's it, it is in part an accident because I think I think some of the the structure that gets generated is is driven a bit by randomness. Um, I think a lot of it, you know. So, uh, you know, one of the conceptions that we have in assembly theory is you know the universe is random at its base. You can see this in chemistry, like unconstrained chemical reactions are pretty random, uh, and then and also quantum mechanics. You know, like there's lots of places that that give evidence for that, um, and deterministic structures emerge by things that can causally reinforce themselves and maintain persistence over time. And so, we are some of the most deterministic things in the universe. And so, like, we can generate very regular structure, and we can generate new structure along a particular lineage. But the possibility space at the sort of tips, like the things we can generate next, is really huge. So there's some stochasticity in what we actually, you know, instantiate as like the next structures that get built in in the biosphere. Um, it's not completely deterministic because the space of future possibilities is always larger than the space of things that exist now.